So the 101% rule is magical and can be applied to anything in your life. That's something that I wish I did when I started. I Legit rim, because I do. Yo, today I'm gonna talk to you about the three simple steps you need to dunk. You think it's gonna be easy though? Simple formula, hard work. Strength, speed, and 101%. So, out of the two pillars, there's strength and speed. Strength, very simple as well, but you have to get to know how to create muscle damage and muscle growth. It's just simple physics. The size of a muscle only has a certain amount of force it can produce, and at some point you're gonna have to grow size. So a book that I read that really helped me understand the way muscles work and how they grow is The World's Fittest Book by Ross Edgley. It really talked about muscle damage versus mus muscle growth. Woo! That book outlines the sets and reps needed to cause muscle damage or muscle growth, which is perfect for me to understand how muscles actually work. So yes, it's easy to build size and build strength, but you want to create the right stimulus. And to be a dunker, you need to be lean, but you need to be super strong, especially as a short dunker. If you're like me, early on in my dunk career, I'm like, I don't need strength, I just need to jump. At least that's what I thought. But just simple physics will tell you that you can only produce so much force. Jumping is just speed plus strength. If you can produce more force faster, that will make you jump higher. So I thought I could just jump, but at some point my muscles were maxed out and I had to get them stronger. The problem I ran into was I was stimulating the wrong type of muscle growth. I wanted to get strong, but I didn't want to get too much size. I was causing so much muscle damage that I was growing a lot in size, getting so big and stocky that it, I lost some of my athleticism. So you want to get strong, but you want to stay lean. And you don't want to just continuously grow size. You want to just get strong and, and pack that muscle in with as much strength as you can to be efficient. The efficiency of your muscles will touch on when I talk about the speed portion of the formula. But at some point when you're strong enough, you need to create more size of your muscles so they can produce more force. Because if a muscle is this small, it can only produce so much force, you need to grow it so it has more surface area to literally have more ability to have more strength and produce more force. The main exercises are obviously squats and deadlifts, but you really want to focus on your technique. The mistake that I made when I started getting stronger was I was not mobile, I was not flexible, and I caused a lot of imbalances in my body, and now I'm having to uncarve those patterns and relearn how to lift. So start with the foundation, start with the range of motion, start with the full mobility, and then build a solid foundation of strength. So the main exercises I like are squats, deadlifts, and you just gotta think about every part of your body. Your quads, your hamstrings, there's no one exercise. You just wanna be strong and you wanna be balanced. So it also depends on what type of jumper you are, but strength and everything, that's the best thing I can do. The big compound lifts are great. Quads, hamstrings, the whole posterior chain when you jump. When you go jump and you jump a ton, you'll feel the soreness and all those places need to get stronger. But squats, deadlifts, and core are huge. But you mainly just want legs, you really want full body. Even shoulders and chest are used in the jumping motion. Lower back is huge, so focus on range of motion early, so that way you can build a solid foundation of strength. So once you're strong, you need to get faster. How do you get faster? You literally just jump, do sprints, do plyometrics. Plyometrics are probably the greatest exercise to get speed, but also just jumping, sprints, anything like that. Anything that's sport specific is a great way to add speed. My favorite exercises for speed are sprints, just jumping to dunk, and I really like depth jumps, because you come from a different height and you have to work up to it. But the key with strength and speed is when you're training these things and you're jumping at the same time, that's a lot of load for your tendons. So you have to think long term and go super gradual with it, because you need to build strength in those tendons so they can absorb this impact because jumping is extreme impact even more than just lifting weights so so far it's pretty simple it's just strength and speed but the key is staying healthy and having a good balance so you can constantly make progress if you get too strong and lose all your speed by the time you're able to use that strength in your speed you lost the strength so you have to have the right balance think long term and go super gradually now onto my favorite rule, the 101% rule. What does that mean? When you're trying to jump, the best analogy I can give is a distance runner. If they're trying to run to 10 miles, they don't just start with one mile and then go to 10. They have to work up to a mile, mile and a half, two miles, but they don't just train in the gym, eat right, all those different supplemental things that are necessary for them to run distance. They have to physically run a further distance. And the same thing is true for jumping. And sometimes for me, I used to throw lobs, I still do it, and I go get it. And that is a rule I can't stress enough, is crucial to your jumping ability. You see a lot of people that don't and that's where they stop because they got their dunk and they're not pushing themselves. You have to push yourself to jump higher. My best advice on my very first video I ever made, my first vlog, is touch something just out of your reach and that's always true. Once, you're in the, once you build strength, 
once you build speed and now you're trying to jump higher, set a goal that's just half an inch out of your reach and go for that. And you have to push yourself to jump for that. And that's the 101% rule. Now here's some, now here's the magic of the 101% rule that I made up myself. So the 101% rule is magical and can be applied to anything in your life. Your body, your mind, everything's a muscle and everything adapts to stimulus. It's about finding the right stimulus to get your body to adapt properly. Whether it's strength, whether it's speed, whether it's your mindset, everything's a muscle. Push yourself just 1% more and find the right stimulus to get yourself to achieve the next level. Let's go! Does that make sense? I hope so. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this thing. It's not like an idea I had, and this is kind of what I like to do for YouTube, so I hope it's kind of fun to watch. Oh, that was good. I made it myself and totally off the cuff <laughs> to adapt properly. Push yourself to that next level and dunk and do anything. Damn, that was pretty good. All right, well, if you enjoyed this one, I got a lot more of that came from 2020, baby. I got that vision, but.